Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Programming the Purpose. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can animate a marker or an annotation over a root on a map using Swift UI. This is one perspective of this animation. You can use it in Uber-like apps, taxi railing apps. And the other one is basically with another perspective that is a closer uh, look of the camera. It is a bit jittery and you can see it is moving at a bit of a faster rate. This is due to the speed of the video and not of the actual animation which you can control using different factors inside your code. So let's start writing the code, import map kit and create a map. Create some of the relevant variables like a start coordinate and an end coordinate. I am hard coding here the value of the source and destination coordinate here. After that, I'm going to show you how we can draw a route, which is a very simple code. You can simply use the code you usually use inside a UI kit as well here. I am basically showing you the code purely in Swift UI so that you can create, draw a route and uh, perform an animation over that route using Swift UI code without the use of UI view representable. That is basically an encapsulation of a UI kit library or code. So this is the function that I'm writing here, find route. So you are going to create a request, add the source and destination, process this request, get the root and pass it inside a variable inside the content view with the name of root and draw it on the map. Once you are done there, next we will start writing the helper functions and the main animation functions. So follow this code. You might find the speed of the code a bit fast. This is due to the reason that I have to basically speed up the animation of the um, simulator as well as the preview so that you do not need to wait long in the video. So wherever you find a confusion, you can simply pause the video and follow the code at your own pace. So here I am passing this root inside a variable root that I have created and initially set as null. So let's fix this small error. We have not initialized it with the macros at the rate of state to enable its change inside content view. So here I'm getting this root and creating a map polyline to draw this root on a map. It is necessary to give it a stroke. Otherwise, this line is not going to be visible. If you have followed my previous video on map kit, you are able to understand this point. So next, the root is visible on the map. That's great. Now let's create another variable with the name of current location, which is going to help us to animate the annotation on the map because we are going to update this variable. Initially set as nil. So let's write some more code and create an annotation for this specific current location. Add the content in which you can add a content in the label, you can basically add a text. So here I'm creating a luxury car. You can give any other text or any other label to your annotation here. So I have created an image car. I have set the current location to start coordinate so that we have some value in the current location to show the annotation on the map. You have seen here on the right hand side, a small black box and a car is appearing. So I'm setting its properties and next a foreground color to make it visible. So this is the annotation we are playing around with using the animation code. So the location is equals to current location is the main point where all of the changes will be passed and this annotation is going to be moved around on the route. Next, I'm going to create some of the helper functions. The first one is interpolate, which is going to interpolate from start to end with a certain progress value. The code is very simple and easy to understand. We are going to add some delta into the start and end coordinates, latitude and longitude, depending upon the progress. 
So for example, if we want to move at a smaller step, like half of the progress, we are going to multiply it with 0.5. How the progress is going to be calculated, I'm going to show you in a while. So we are going to calculate the new latitude and the new longitude of the marker by subtracting the previous value and multiplying it with the progress, adding it to your initial value. So basically it is the initial value plus some delta multiplied by the progress at which you want that delta to change. Next, there is another function interpolate between that is going to move from number of steps and for a certain duration, it is going to move between some of the points that are being passed to this function. So we are going to split our start and end coordinate the distance between them into steps. The finer the steps are, the smoother the animation will be. If we are going to create huge steps, their motion will be jittery. You can try it out with the setting different kind of values when I'm going to show you the code. So first I'm just writing a simple extension because the distance function is not available for CL location coordinate 2D and only for CL location coordinate. So I am basically mapping this function to return the value of distance for our type CL location coordinate 2D. It is just a wrapper on the top of the function of the distance for CL location. So we are done with the extension. We are going to use it inside our code on line number 44. Next, we are going to set a speed. This is going to be a constant speed. It does not have a unit. You can set whatever value that suits your need. The greater the value, the higher will be the speed of the car on the animation. Then there is a total duration which is going to be calculated, like how much time it is going to take to animate from a start to and CLL location coordinate 2D. That is basically the total duration. We have calculated some total steps and a step size. So now I'm writing a timer code that is going to basically time this animation and perform all of these methods and get the value from the interpolate method. Next, I'm calculating the current location depending upon the interpolate method and passing it a progress, which is basically the multiplication of the current step multiplied by the step size. Next, I'm going to write the actual function that is going to start animating the annotation. So in root, we usually get the values in steps. Each of the straight line form a single step inside a root. So we have almost five to six steps inside this route that I have shown you on the screen. It is going to get a single straight line and it is going to pass the start and end coordinates of that line to this function interpolate between which is going to further split it into smaller step sizes and animate the marker over it. So let's write the code here. Step index is basically how much steps we have uh, processed inside this root. So if there are seven steps, so step index is going from zero to five because we need to keep a value of one for the boundary condition. We need to pass the coordinate of the first step and the next step as start and end point. And next we are going to increment this step index. There is going to be a problem with this code, which I'm going to show you here. So it has navigated from one point to another without animation. This is due to the reason that all of these steps are being handled in a uh, continuous parallel fashion. We need some wait for the timer to finish before we want to move to the next step. So this is fixed using 
an async keyword which we are going to place inside the function. So we are going to make a synchronous function into an asynchronous function with continue checking. This is going to only continue when we are done with the timer.invalidate code and next we are going to move to the next step. There might be other ways of doing it, but I found it more useful. So we are going to await for this value before moving on to the next iteration of our while loop inside the animate annotation function. So we have called this function start annotation animation. And you have seen here it is animating, but at a very slow speed. So if you are zoomed out or panned out of the camera, you will not be able to see the animation. So you have to basically zoom in using the simulator keys. Now here I'm going to show you how the total duration is going to work. So if you are going to give it a value of suppose five, it is going to move even more slowly. The smaller the value of the total duration, the quicker the animation will be. So you can try out with different values, but we do not need to put this value as a constant because if you put it as a constant, it is going to basically handle all of the animations from one point to another with the uh, variable speed, which does not look nice because when the points are far away, the speed is going to be faster to cover the same distance in the same duration. Basically longer distance in the same duration. So this is the duration that I've kept point one that has made the speed higher of the animation. So we have moved back to our original code and here I am increasing the speed. So you can basically change the speed, but it will be constant across animation of all of the step sizes in the route. So next I am creating another functionality to show you how you can use map camera key frame animator to pan, zoom out and zoom in according to your need. So I have created two key frame tracks here. The first one is shown here, which is going to basically change the map camera dot center coordinate with a linear keyframe. Another another one is going to change the map camera dot distance with another linear keyframe. It has a certain duration and a timing curve. You can play around with these values, but these do not have uh, much of an, an effect. Duration should be kept small so that we quickly move to that location or uh, to that camera position on the map. It has a trigger, which means that this animation is only triggered when we alter that trigger variable. This is an important step. So we are going to place the trigger at a very specific location so that it gets triggered at the relevant point and not at every point. Firstly, I have triggered it with the wherever we are changing the current location. You are going to see that it is going to create a lot of jitterness in the map. This is due to the reason that the animation is playing at a very high rate. It is also memory intensive. So this approach is not suitable if you do not need that much precision. So you are going to see that the animation is not smooth. It's not that good. You can play around with the values to smooth out the animation, but basically it is the issue with the trigger variable where the trigger is placed. So if you move it from that position to the function animate annotation, where we are altering the step, you can move there. But there is a small problem with this that it is only going to change the camera when we are entering into the new route. So when the routes are longer, you are going to miss the position of the car on the camera. So I'm going to show you here when the route is longer, like in the second step, or I think it's the third step. Here we are going to lose our car on the camera because it is going to be triggered when we are going to enter the next step, which is going to happen quite far away from here.
So I have ma manually zoomed out of the map to show you where our car is. And now it's going to be adjusted. This is the actual animation, the camera animator frames that we have added. So next, I have added the trigger whenever we are halfway in the total number of steps. It is a good point. It is not going to be memory intensive because if we have longer route, we are just going to switch the camera in the middle. You can also keep a check that if the distance is too long between a step, like a step is too long, you can place the trigger at two or three points. So it can be made into a variable kind of a code. Even with this code, we are going to lose the track of the car at some point, but it is still better than the first and the second option. Like keeping it to total jittery or just like ignoring the car for a lot of the time. You can also show the movement inside a 3D view of the map as well that I've shown you in my previous video. So this is all. Do not forget to like and share this video, subscribe to my channel. And if there is anything new you want to learn about maps, post in the comment section. Thanks for tuning in.